Like, OMG! <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another episode of That New Toy Smell. I'm Pixel Dan. I'm Duvall. I'm Dirt! And Dirt's on camera. Killin's over there and somewhere. Kill and Killin's over there. They all want you to know that they're here. Yeah, they're here. <laughs> so what's going on, guys? It is 2010. Wow, really? Holy crap. 2009, it flew by really quick. Yeah, it did. I can't believe it. So we are now technically into the third year of that new toy smell but actually we're only like what going on two years of actually doing the show right? technically because we started this at the end of 2008 yeah and now it's 2010 so come the end of 2010 it'll be it'll be two full years yeah, actually two full years. yeah amazing it's amazing we've been doing this for so long so 2009 was actually a pretty good year for toys i would say a lot of great things came out this year as you can see <laughs> yeah. in front of us <laughs> yes why do we have all these he-man figures in front of us mm. Because Pixel Dan has got an amazing video to show today. That's right. Later on in the show, we'll be featuring a video on the best of 2009 Masters of the Universe classics. Yes. But before we get into that, we kind of wanted to have a little bit of a discussion on some of the other things we've seen this year. Uh, some of the things we liked the best, some of the things we didn't like as much. So I thought we'd have a little bit of 2009 toy talk. Cool. So, thinking of 2009, we saw a lot of new lines coming out this year. A lot of uh, movie-based stuff. Avatar. A lot of brand new stuff. That's right. We Star just Trek, Terminator. Start with the Avatar stuff, the Terminator stuff. All that stuff came out this year. So G.I. Joe. Thinking of, uh, exactly, G.I. Joe, a lot of big stuff. Uh, Revenge of the Fallen. Yes. Transformers. Yes. So a lot of toy lines came out as a result of movies this year. Um, but we also just got overall a lot of uh, new toy lines, or the movies that did produce toy lines were actually like... From uh, previously existing franchises like G.I. Joe or Transformers. Yes. So it's like just a, a new look just at some of the... refreshing the Yeah, a, a the new year. refresh for some of the toys we already had in the stores. So uh, Stop it! Killing likes taffy. He's eating it off camera. <laughs> Woo, taffy! Yeah! So, look... Oh, good. Good, great. <laughs> great. So looking at the toy Show's lines... Show's canceled. Show's canceled because of the taffy? Right. Dang it. Moving right along. Yes. Looking at the lines from 2009, I thought it'd be cool to just kind of talk about some of our favorites. So, of 2009, what was, your, what was, favorite what was my favorite? My favorite new toy line of 2009 is sitting right in front yeah, of us. Yeah, I was going to say, if you didn't say I it, think you didn't punch. there is no question about it. Being a big Masters of the Universe fan, of course, this is the one thing that's excited me the most. Yeah, Masters of the Universe Classic 2009. <laughs> what a year. Woo what about you, Duvall? <laughs> what is your favorite line of 2009? Uh, you know, my favorite line actually isn't Masters. Really? Uh, Masters was a great line but for me personally on a personal note um i was just happy to see movie style ghostbuster figures ghostbusters yeah woo! that's another, that's another now, really now, good a lot one. of people may disagree with that since they use the same body sculpts the head sculpts aren't great but you know what? they're, they're still, movie style ghostbusters exactly it's been 20 years i'm happy exactly and that's the same way i feel about them they might be reusing the sculpts but you know what they're still awesome figures to Absolutely. have uh, we finally have Movie-based Ghostbusters in our collections. Yes. So that's all that excites me. So what about your least favorite toy <laughs> line of the year? <laughs> how, many, how much time do we have? No, just, just oh, okay. spill it out, man. God, uh, Terminator Salvation figures were god-awful. Oh! Uh, um, uh, the Avatar figures, as I much as people, as, as much as people uh, respond to our video reviews on those, on our YouTube account and on yeah. the message boards, I understand people like the movie. I like the movie. Killen liked the movie. Uh, the toy line left something to be, you I, know, you know just, I, yeah, thank the, you. Uh, 
the figures themselves, I'm not real impressed with. What I do like from the Avatar line are some of the bigger items, like the, the vehicles. Beast, the vehicles. Like the, uh, the, the, the amp suit was really the cool. Amp suit! Yeah, yeah! Amp suit! The, the amp suit was the awesome. The only reason Dirt's cheering is because you gave him the I amp gave suit. him an amp suit. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, God, uh, as much as Dirt liked the Star Trek line, it really wasn't a great I was, line of I was, toys. I was just and getting ready to get they into are, that. They are clogging the pegs. And henceforth, we won't see Series 2, which means Dirt will never get to complete his... his, bri- his <laughs> he'll never get to complete his bridge playset or his teleporter playset. I was going to say, I wouldn't call it my least favorite toy line, but I would definitely call Star Trek my most disappointing yeah. toy line of 2009. And this is why. When I found out that Playmates got the rights to do Star Trek figures again, I got really excited, hoping we were going to get something like we got, yeah. you know, back when in the heyday of Next Generation and everything. We, we did. When I heard that they were going to be three and three quarter inch figures, I got even more more excited and then I started seeing some of the pictures pop up of the bridge playset and all that yeah. I thought that was all awesome and then they actually hit the stores and like we found out that the bridge didn't come with all the pieces it was supposed to Boo! you had to buy it all separate I, and that the format was just a piece of plastic you, you know what, flimsy plastic you, you had to lay you've down. never seen a big kid as disappointed as dirt when he found out how many figures he had to buy because he didn't want to buy them all at first and he's like, I gotta buy all these now just to get the teleport. God! And some of them you had to even get duplicates, yeah, right? Like yeah. different versions of characters to get different pieces for the no, same version, just with different accessories. Different yes, accessories. Yes, that is awful. Go. See, oh. Playmates really dropped the ball with the Star Trek. Well, it line. makes you wonder what happened to Playmates sculptors they had in the '80s and early '90s. Like all those guys left for other companies, right. and suddenly Playmates is like, well, we got these licenses for these two and, big and, summer hits, and all and of those. Let's just, I don't know. What about all the the great anything. play sets we got back then, like oh, yeah. the Next Generation <laughs> Bridge and the the, the engineering room and the transport yeah. were all fantastic play sets. What did you guys do? What is with this new bridge? I mean, you know, come I, on. I gotta go really? back to Terminator for a second because the biggest disappointment of any toy line this year was the fact that they took the John Connor figure, which was supposed to be Christian Bale, and apparently couldn't get Christian Bale's likeness rights. So, they so instead of actually, face. they just covered his face on every figure. There were two figures, and each one's got his face covered. So it's that not sucks. really Christian Bale. It's like it, it reminds me of back when what was it, McFarlane or whoever had the rest of the original Terminator figures, and they couldn't, they couldn't do use an Arnold. Arnold. So they so kind they, of they, looked like they Arnold, blew his but face it wasn't. I, I was fine with that. Yeah. It was just a big, bulky dude with sunglasses. Yeah. That's right. But the new ones, yeah. What they, else? And, and what not else? to mention the sculpts on those figures were just straight not good. On the yeah, new ones, no, not the Terminator all. figures, no. and they're still clogging shelf pads. Yes. You know, that's the problem with them. What, uh, what else were you disappointed with this year? Uh, Star Trek was my biggest disappointment. Yeah. I don't. I don't think there was anything else in particular that stands out. I'll tell you what I am disappointed in. There's a couple things, because there were I was really excited about them, and now I don't know what's going on with both of them. It is the Ninja Turtles 25th anniversary line and the NECA comic book Ninja Turtles line. Okay, Woo! Okay, Good I can lies! tell you. Good lies! I can tell you more than likely the Playmates thing's still gonna happen next year. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you they show the stuff off at Toy Fair. The NECA line. I guarantee you it was gone. And it's that's done. that's terrible. Because I, I was so excited about NECA's Ninja Turtle line, and I was ready to get Shredder, yep. and I was ready to get the Foot Soldiers, and then all of a sudden, you, we don't know what's going on anymore, yep. and then they sit, they tell us they're going to release April, which is a great figure, except they're telling us that sales on April are going to determine whether or not we get the rest of the figures, which, which pretty much tells me they're not going to release which those Which Killen's, was, was Killen's argument has always been, why, why, why do April? April? Why, why not April? release Shredder? If they want, if they needed to get tooling dollars, Shredder was the guy they should have yeah, released. But no, it doesn't now, make any sense to me. But you know, I mean, I'm we're not, not we're not dissing NECA here. We're not dissing Randy Falk or any of those guys. But to be <laughs> Randy honest, Randy Falk. To be honest, Playmates has screwed NECA. Literally, I guarantee you. You think that's it's what Playmates' happened. fault? Playmates and Nickelodeon now. Well, and and this so is Nickelodeon the thing. holds the master license now. Well, that's they're it, they're pulling the strings. And it makes me wonder if that's what happened to the 25th anniversary line because we never got that last wave no. with Shredder and Casey Jones and the Foot Soldier nope. and Slash. I'm still, I mean, I'm still waiting for those four figures. And supposedly we're getting all these other ones like the movie stars, and we're still supposed to get Playmates version of the comic figures. Yep. But where is all that stuff? That was all shown at last year's Toy Fair. Yeah. All was supposed to be out this year on store shelves and. and the, the only thing we've heard lately is that they've struck a deal with Toys R Us to be Toys R Us exclusives, but we still have no release dates on any of this stuff. So I don't know what's going on, if it's still coming, if it's not till next year. What's going on, Playmates? You're, you're dangling, uh, you know, this, this, this awesome carrot. carrot in front of our faces. Thank you, Dirt. And we can't catch Woo! it. Woo! Dirt with the save! <laughs> Dirt yeah! with the save! All right! Oh. Gosh. Uh... Oh, no! Oh, God! <laughs> Hey, oh. he, He-Man took out Scareglow, but took out his father in, in the hey, process. Hey, no, 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 it's cool. Look who's still standing in that group. 
Skeletor is still standing. Randor is down. Go, Go team, team Skeletor! Skeletor. <laughs> hey, hey, man in arms, how you doing? <laughs> Oh, Scarglow! Come back to a Scarglow. Okay. So now that we've picked up all our figures, um, what, what, are you, is, what are you looking forward to in 2010? Well, there are. What is like newer? Like most of all, I'm looking forward to the new stuff from the Masters, obviously, because Battle Cat's coming out in 20, 2010. Figure stuff like oh man, figure stands would be. Thank you, Killen. <laughs> we need figure stands for these. I know those are supposed to be coming. We need those soon because these dudes are just. He-Man won't stand, so it's, 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 it's sexy pose. He-Man. I know something I want to talk about. Yes. Uh, most surprising toy line of 2009. Mine. I'm going to give mine to the Marvel Universe line, and this is why. Yeah, Marvel yeah. Universe. I, when, I agree. when when Marvel Universe first launched. Yeah, now let's talk because we we had an exclusive sneak peek for you. We did last with, year with Bullseye. With Bullseye, and, and none of us were happy with them. I first of all, here's the thing. I, I was a huge collector of Marvel Legends all the way up until about the time Hasbro took over. Right. I got, I was done with it by that point. Yeah. I was, I didn't like Hasbro's versions of the Marvel Legends figures, so I kind of quit collecting, and I ended up getting rid of most of my Marvel Legends toys. So when they decided they were going to release Marvel Universe, new three and three quarter inch figures, my initial reaction was, I really don't want to buy all those those characters again. <laughs> yeah, no, not at I all. I don't want to. I mean, I, I don't like that they've shrunk them down, you know, whatever. And then when they started showing their, the first figures, like Bullseye, I, I was not impressed. I didn't like the funky neck thing going on, and, and I just, not at all. I, I was not impressed. But it did a total, like, 180 for me because... It took them a while to find their foot. It did. Their it took them a while to get really going. Get into it. But I found myself so addicted to buying Marvel, uh, Marvel Universe figures this year it's like I've I've restarted a Marvel collection yeah. now because now I'm just like dirt. Every time I go to the store, I have to dig through all the Marvel Universe figures to see if there's any characters out that I don't have yet. And whatever's out there that I don't have, I buy. I, yeah. I bring it oh, home. Oh, for figures! <laughs> yeah! So, so, so Marvel Universe is definitely my most surprising line of the year because I had no idea I was going to end up collecting those, and yeah. now they're one of my favorite toy lines to collect. So kudos to Hasbro on that one. They did I don't a great know if there's job. there's any... Real surprises I had for 2009. Um, uh, DC Universe has really been going strong. Oh no, well, too. I guess DC Universe would be my. That's another one that that's, like. That's really the only line besides Masters. Yeah, that you've been I collecting collect. that pretty yeah. hard, and they've had a really good year. Oh, man. I mean, DC oh, God, fans yeah. have the best figures right now with DC Universe. I mean, those to me, those have well surpassed what Marvel Legends ever yeah. did. Oh yeah, I and think the DC Universe stuff is way better looking than any of the Marvel Legends yeah, figures. Yeah, their collecting connect figures are much mm -hmm. better. I mean, they've got the talents of the four horsemen so it's, pulling the reins, exactly. you know, doing all the sculpts on the figures, um, and they're just releasing so many second and third tier characters that have started to become more popular or are lesser known now that are mm -hmm. making a lot of fans. You know, it's it's really broadening that that scope of yeah. what's available for Absolutely. people to buy. So it's, that's it's, that's what people are excited about. Where the Marvel Legends had like. 15 or 18 different Wolverines, right. you know, the DC Universe line has only had, like, a handful of different Batman Well, and they, and they re-release, you know, some of their core characters from time to time, but that's a yeah. good thing to do, because yeah. you're always going to have those people that want to walk into a store and find a Superman or find a Batman, and it's good that they do that, but the cool thing about DC Universe is they've, like, they've made it their goal to just release all these unique characters, yeah. these obscure characters that you never thought would get action figures. Yes, Dirt. Well, and when they re-release one, they do it later on. They don't do it in the next wave. Exactly. To clog the pegs. Yes. Exactly. So you don't have, you don't ever have to worry about uh, Batman's clogging the pegs with DC Universe. No. You know, well, like good that. luck trying and to find DC Universe on the shelves. That's I mean, that's the other thing. It's, good it's, luck it's... finding DC Universe on the shelves. <laughs> while we're on DC Universe, while it was the most surprising for me of 2009. It was also the most disappointing because of exclusive waves. Exclusive. Because of the Walmart exclusive waves. Exclusive wave. waves are the worst thing ever. It was horrible. Yeah, the Walmart exclusives, there was two of them this year, right? One at the very beginning of the year, and then the newer one. Uh, and they were both incredibly hard to find yeah. for most collectors. Yeah. So, I mean, Walmart, I mean, when you have a line that popular, it's terrible to do a store exclusive with it. I mean, but, it I just, mean, if Walmart's going to pay for the tooling and everything for these different figures, you know what the... That's, I mean, that's always a good thing about it. You know, there's always, there's always pros and cons when it comes with two exclusives. I lost my you bike. lost your microphone. Are you good? I now? got it. Can we hear you now? I'm good. 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 It fell. <laughs> but well, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a good time to be a DC fan. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I would definitely say that because Mattel's really got something good going there, yeah. and I don't see it ending anytime soon. Oh, no. So. Not, with the, not with the way the sales are. There's no yeah. way. Sweet. Sweet. I also want to give a shout out to G.I. Joe adding 
core uh, original figures to the Rise of Cobra line. Excellent. That's yeah. another one yeah. I wanted to talk about. G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra figures. G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra! Excellent. I was, that was another one that I would put under my, uh, uh, like, a pleasant surprise type yeah. thing. I had no idea that, the, like... I got a little worried when they were like, we're going to do G.I. Joe figures based off the movie. But, you know, they kept them the same scale. Yeah. They pretty much kept them the same style. Yeah, absolutely. For the, some of the ones that have the movie likenesses aren't great. But They're for okay. the most, all the other ones, including the ones like Dirt just mentioned, where they added regular characters into the movie line and, like, movieized them. Yeah. All that stuff looks great to me. And the vehicles look awesome. The biggest surprise... I mean, to me, out of that line is the pit play set. The pit play set is, is fantastic. Amazing. Believe it or which, not, we actually have video we, for a review that we, we were going to do back in August. We got to do a review and of that. It still. never happened because we got lost in everything else. <laughs> eventually, um, we're going to get a pit yeah, review. Yeah, eventually. We, we do, do have soon. a pit. We have it filmed. We should just we do that for together. an episode. A pit? We're going to do the pit episode sometime soon. Absolutely. <laughs> we got to do that. I love the pit. It's so cool. It's a cool, it's a cool place. Sweet. Set. So 2009, great year. It was great a great year. year for toys. It was a great but, year to be toy collectors, um, unless you uh, are just angry toy collectors, which I have, to, I have to sit on for a second because a lot of people pointed out wanting to know why I'm so angry and upset all the time. I saw that. That yeah. was funny. Here's why. <laughs> he collects we as, dolls. We, we as collectors are the most vocal group of people in the world, without a doubt. Especially no matter with these guys. Especially with these guys. And it irritates me when I see people complaining about, oh, this figure used this parts again, or that figure used that parts again, or why choose a goddess figure, or the DC Universe figure, why this figure, why that figure? Just be happy, okay? Yeah. Be glad that you have these figures, that you can buy these figures, and they're available for you to purchase hey. no matter the troubles, no matter the problems. I've complained about you know, Digital River just like everyone else. I've had my issues. But that is why I seem so upset when we talk about these things. You screamed at him one time on the phone. It, I did. It, it just irritates me as all, guys. That's, that's all it is. I'm sure it's the same feeling you guys have when, I don't know, when you get a goddess figure before your actual subscription figure of Randor. I still haven't gotten Randor. <laughs> What's up so with that? that's that's that same feeling. I just am more Except vocal about it, and and you know, I'm going to speak my mind whether they want to hear it or not. So. Speak in your mind, dude. Thank you, dude. Yeah. yeah. Action figure collecting a serious business. It is. That's all I have to say. Scary. Try, right. Wait, wait till you guys get to walk around San Diego this year, and then I can't wait. No. <laughs> Okay, well, with, with all the 2009 discussion out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this week's video, yes. which takes a look at Masters of the Universe Classics in the year 2009. At the tail end of 2008, we saw the relaunch of the most powerful man in the universe with Masters of the Universe Classics, a new toy line specifically created for collectors and sold exclusively through MattyCollector.com. The line kicked off with three figures at the end of the year, King Grayskull, He-Man, and Beast-Man. With these awesome figures being received incredibly well by fans of the franchise, it was clear that 2009 would prove to be a fantastic year for He-Man and company. So let's take a look at the first full year of Masters of the Universe Classics. 2009 started off on a very high note, with the Overlord of Evil himself, Skeletor. Since we had already had He-Man in our collections for two months by this point, Skeletor was highly anticipated. And that really showed, as Skeletor started the trend for the same day sellouts on MattyCollector.com. Because of this, Many unsuspecting people missed out on He-Man's arch rival and would have to wait until the end of the year for a reissue. Stratos hit the scene in February, adding to the ranks of the heroic warriors. While the sculpt of Stratos was quite good, his downfall was that he severely lacked accessories. Although it came just as the original, every other figure in this line has come with at least one accessory. Even still, Stratos was a welcome addition to the collections of many. March was originally intended for Merman, but, but because Mattel wanted to correct some issues before his release, Faker became the figure of the month. Faker was originally offered as the New York Comic Con exclusive and was originally intended to stay that way. 
He's just as you remember, a repainted He-Man with Skeletor's armor. But the paint job on this figure might still be one of the best to date. He even included his awesome robot chess piece. Merman was finally made available in April and instantly became one of the most raved about figures to date. Between his incredible paint deco and the ability to display him with either his classic figurehead or his 8-back head, Merman instantly became a must-have for everyone's collection. May's release was the neutral cosmic warrior known as Zodak. The figure was based on the original incarnation of Zodak, as seen from the original toy line. Just like Stratos before him, Zodak was very light on accessories, only including his blaster. Depending on how you sighted Zodak, the evil warriors on collection shelves were really starting to outnumber the heroes. June was a huge month as we saw the release of the ruthless leader of the evil horde himself, Hordak. Since the 2002 line never actually saw a Hordak figure released, this one was highly anticipated and once again another fast sellout for the Classics line. His design was reminiscent of his original figure, with some 2002 style influence seen in his staff. Hordak's release was exciting for many who were already anticipating more figures from the Evil Horde and the world of She-Ra. As July rolled around, it was time for the San Diego Comic-Con, and an all-new exclusive figure for Masters of the Universe Classics. Available first at the con, then soon after at MaddieCollector.com came one of the most anticipated Masters figures of all time, Hero. Originally planned to be released as the main character in the Powers of Grayskull toy line, Hero has been nothing more than a prototype picture floating around the internet for years and years. The Masters of the Universe Classics Hero finally gave the die-hard Masters fans a figure that they have been wanting for years and he did not disappoint. The main July figure was actually quite impressive. Though many were excited about Man at Arms, he turned out to be a much cooler figure than I think most were expecting him to be. He had the ability to swap heads from the classic clean shaven head to the much more recognizable mustache head as he always appeared in the cartoons. He also came with a slew of weapons, and the back of his armor worked as a mini weapons rack. And for fans of the 2002 series, Man at Arms also included a bonus accessory, a brand new version of the 2002 Power Sword. Duncan was easily a must have. In August, we retreated to another evil warrior in Triclops. Another remarkable figure, it was easy to see that Mattel was on a roll. Triclops came with quite an impressive assortment of accessories himself, such as his classic sword, a Doom Seeker from the 2002 series, and even a brand new version of the classic warrior ring. Web Store went on sale as September's figure. As another character that hasn't had an action figure since the 80s, many were quite exciting to get their hands on him. Although he's lacking his classic pulley system action feature, Webster does still include a rope and grappling hook attached to his backpack. He also has a bit of a 2002 influence with the inclusion of small spider legs attached to his back. October was another big month, as fans were treated to the first female figure in the lineup. The Captain of the Guard herself, Tila. Tila was an all-around amazing sculpt, who also came with a slew of accessories. 
she has the option of swapping heads and armor to display her with that classic snake armor of the old figure, or her ponytailed head as we were used to seeing her in the cartoons. Tila showed all of us exactly what we can expect to see with female figures in this line to come, and has many even more excited to see some of their favorite Princess of Power figures get a release. October was also the first time we received a bonus figure, the 2002 version of Zodak. This Zodak's figure was based on his appearance in the MYP cartoon series and included a staff and glow-in-the-dark tattoos. His bio even distinguished him as a separate character from the previously released Zodak, giving us an explanation for both of them existing and both being so different from one another. November gave us a re-release of He-Man, which was well accepted by collectors, especially those who missed him originally. He featured a few minor differences, such as the paint on his face. Many even considered him to be an improvement over the original release. The brand new figure in November was one that I was incredibly excited about, Scared Low. Scareglow is another character released in 2009 who has not had an action figure since the 80s. He features a killer sculpt, and his classic glow-in-the-dark action feature is still intact. He even came with a brand new accessory created by the Four Horsemen, a small key to Castle Grayskull chained to his wrist. It's an awesome accessory for an incredibly awesome figure. December closed out 2009 with three figures being released. Skeletor got a reissue, which was great news for those who missed out on him at the beginning of the year. But we also received his half-brother and ruler of Eternia, King Randor. Randor was strongly based off his look in the classic toy line. Because of his bright colors and his awkward resemblance to the Burger King, Randor did receive some criticism. Even still, he's overall a great figure, and still sold out quickly. The bonus figure in December was another first-time figure, the goddess from the early mini-comics. She's the precursor to the sorceress, and really isn't well known except to the die-hard fans of the classic series. Goddess featured a really cool translucent green skin and was a very welcome addition to the line by the fans of the old figure series. With an impressive 17 figures being released in 2009, it is clear that Masters of the Universe is once again running strong. And it seems we have a whole lot more to look forward to in 2010. So what are my picks for 2009? Well, my favorite figure of the year has to be Scareglow. Man at Arms was close to winning this award for me, but Scareglow has always been a favorite character of mine, and I just can't get over how awesome this new figure is. My least favorite figure of the year has got to be Webstore. That may be surprising to some, but I really found myself underwhelmed by this figure. Something about his dull paint job and the lack of a pulley in his backpack really just knocked him down a notch for me. There already seems to be quite a bit coming out in 2010 that I am really excited about. And you bet that I'll be taking a look at each figure individually as they come out. So until then, I'm Pixel Dan. Take care, guys. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed this week's video. I did. Did you like it? I did. I like that you pointed out that uh, the Scareglow was your favorite figure well, yeah. out of the entire line, uh, and Web Store was your least favorite. Web Store is my least favorite. That actually was surprising to me. I think it was actually surprising. Actually surprised you chose Web Store and not, I don't know, Stratos. Well, I'll tell you what, my, my second, the one that Who was almost... was waving? By the seem waving? Oh, I yeah, like Stratos okay. Do. I like Stratos okay, but Zodak with a C would be my... Second least favorite yeah. figure. Like he, he, it was between him and Webstore over my least favorite. But like, 
I don't know. Webster's a pretty sweet looking figure, honestly, but it was like my disappointment with him is what made him my least favorite. Here, here's, I, uh, here's the biggest disappointment I had at Webster. I understand that they said there were going to be no action features. I get mm. that. That's cool. But seriously, a backpack yeah. that doesn't work. Well, I've, I mean, I've talked about Toy this Toy Guru! I talked about it in my review of them. I, I appreciate what they did here with the rope, but yeah. it just gets in the way. It's pointless. It just tangles up and gets all over the place. Yep. His his paint job is so dull compared to the rest of them. Like He doesn't have any of the shading or anything that the other guys have. And they added the small, stubby little From the 2002 feet, version. Which I, I, yeah, I understand they did it to be like a nod to the 2002 version, but I don't like how it's not removable. So, like, it's just always stuck there. So, if you didn't like your web store with these extra appendages, you, you don't have an option. They're pretty much there. Yeah. You, can, you can fold them back if you want to, I guess. Yeah, and hide them. And try to hide them. But, I don't know. Just overall, when I got this one, I was just like, ah, I'm unimpressed. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, he was, the, he was one of the few figures that I didn't open and go, oh, my God, it's my favorite figure ever. Because I, I, every figure. I pretty much did that every time until, you know, the excitement of the new figure wore off. This is the best one yet! And then a day later, I'm like, well, it wasn't, it's not really the best one yet. Man. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good, though. He's pretty, he's pretty awesome. Um, Scareglow got my favorite figure of the year because I've always been a huge fan of the Scareglow figure. And he's one of those ones that I wanted to see get a new figure yeah. in 2002 real bad. He never got it. He never got a staction. So it's like the first time we've seen him since the 80s. Yeah. And it's just an amazing sculpt. And I love the little extra accessory with the gray skull key. Glow in the dark. I think that's a nice touch. But the guy that almost won my favorite figure of the year was Man at Arms. And Man at Arms was just like such a huge surprise to me when I well, got him. For the fact that I don't know, he's got you know he they gave, they gave him the extra weapons, the sword and the gun. I mean, he's got like a whole weapons you know, rack yeah. right on his back. That's fantastic. He's got the mace, and of course, you didn't bring the extra head. But of course I didn't bring the extra the, head uh, with him. But he's, he's got, got the removable head that you could actually put the the mustache head. mustachioed yep. Duncan head. And like, I mean, the armor, the details on the armor is fantastic. I love the colors on the figure. I yeah. mean, overall, I was just like, I've never been a big Man at Arms fan, but when I got this figure, I was just, I couldn't believe it. I was like, you, you stand him up. I was like, this is just the coolest figure I've seen yet, like for real, like for real, <laughs> for real, for real. Like I, I loved it. So he almost got my favorite figure of the year. Um, Merman is another one that was, that was Merman was a great figure, really good. Um, I really enjoyed Hordak, Hordak for this year. Yeah. I thought Hordak was. Uh, Probably one of the cooler figures released this year. Uh, my most disappointing figure would have to be Hero. Hero? Really? You know, I'm glad they made the figure. It's it's cool that we finally get this figure after all those years. Um, I'm just, I just wasn't happy with him. Really? You know, I just, well, what's, I, what's, what's, what makes you not happy about you him? You know, it's just the, he just seems way too. <laughs> I'll tell you what I wish he had. Basic. Yeah, thank you, Killen. Basic. Basic. To put my thought into words. You know what probably would have made him better? What I wish he would have? The metallic gold armor that a the metallic, old prototype A metallic had. paint job would have been really because cool. Because the, like the, uh, the vac metal or whatever. Because yeah. the original prototype, he had that really cool shiny metallic yes. gold armor. And I think and that's what made him look so His staff so cool. was all vac yeah. core metal. So, and then they didn't do that on this new one. Which yeah. I understand why. The vac metal stuff's usually not like it flakes, it, yeah, flakes eventually. And, and, but... You know, I don't know. It, it does kind of take away from him that he doesn't have it, I think. Because I look at all those old prototype pictures and I see that figure that I used to long for. Like, yeah. oh, I wish they would have ever released that. He's so cool looking. And then we finally got him. And I think he's awesome. But I think he would have been way cooler if he had that vac metal armor. He yeah. would have that metallic yeah. gold. I think. But I don't know. I mean, you know is, that, I mean is that it for you? Is that why you don't like him Pretty much. So much. I mean, he just he just seemed really basic to me. I mean, whereas you were really disappointed with Webster, I, I, could, I can live with it. But just for some reason, even seeing the pictures of Hero months, you know, months in advance, and then standing in line at San Diego to get everyone's heroes, <laughs> uh, I think. Well, you know, I think that's actually what did it for me was San Diego. And I'm San not Diego lying. killed I, Hero. I won't lie. It, it really killed it. For those of you who stood in that line, you understand. For me, standing in that line and buying from myself for Pixel Dan, uh, for Scott of Cash, uh, for a couple other people. And having to lug all of those bags back to the hotel pretty much killed my experience with Hero. <laughs> well, I'll be there to help you next time. Thank you. <laughs> uh, He-Man got a reissue this year, which I really liked. So did, I don't know. Did, so did Skeletor. Skeletor. Go did, Team Skeletor. Go Team Skeletor. The He-Man reissue had a lot more uh, upgrades to it, though, that I liked. Like, I didn't really 
I didn't really have the issues with He-Man originally that a lot of people had, but yeah. when I got the reissue, I really saw the difference. Yeah. Like, I, I, I like that they got rid of the paint on his the, face, the like muted, the red. Yeah, they had, he had, like, rouge on his cheeks, and It just looks, he looks better overall. Yeah, he does look so. like a, he does look a much better figure. Um, the only thing I'm still upset with is the loincloth is... It's, it's a lot more flexible you know, than it, it used to it be. It is, but... The, the, the original one wasn't completely stiff. you got to remember that. The first yeah. couple, like King Grayskull and He-Man and Beast-Man all had those really stiff loincloths. Yep. They didn't and move at all. Really worried mine's not going to sit on Battle Cat sit at on all. Battle Cat. Well, I think Battle Cat's uh, saddle is formed for it, so you should be okay. That's good. Well, we'll see. Uh, hopefully we'll have that soon. Yes, soon. <laughs> I can review that. Um, the cool thing about Masters Universe Classics this year is they really seem to give us a lot of these obscure characters that we didn't think we were yeah. seeing in a toy line like hero and Scared specifically low. like like the green goddess the green goddess yeah like we got some of these older uh pre-eternian characters which is what they're all often referred to yeah. like like the green goddess and uh hero which are all characters that existed in like the ancient times before the rise of he-man and yeah. all that stuff so that's kind of cool that we're getting stuff like that because I mean, you that's can not something we back into that list yeah hordak, he, he, hordak was one of the, yep, he was one of the big villains at the time yep. you could put zodak in that list too actually because yep. he was around at the time but i mean they, they really did you know really did a great job to bring a whole lot of uh, diversity to this they're hitting this all aspects of the masters of the universe universe yeah. you know Ooh. by hitting uh, by hitting the classic mini comics with the green goddess by hitting the myp cartoon series with zodak with a the k King. you know and and you know classic toy line like the original king randor yeah. and scareglow they're hitting all aspects of the series and i think that is really and even great. beyond that with the interchangeable heads like merman's interchangeable head to make it look like the back of the original packaging that's right that's you know, right uh, or you know arms head to make them look like the cartoon the yeah. that's right so i mean they're I think Mattel is doing a fantastic job of just taking from all the different genres of Masters of the Universe yeah. and putting them all together in one toy line to try to appease all of us, you yeah, know? 2010 looks like it's going to be a heck of a year. Oh we have Adora gosh. in January. Adora and Battle and Armor He-Man. Battle he Armor He-Man. Wondar, our Wondar should be here Wondar in, ships. by March. I think. Uh, e Evil Lynn is in April. Yeah, Evil in April. Uh, Moss Man is in March. Yeah. I mean, we've already got a big year. And then uh, they've already announced that at Toy Fair they're revealing four new figures. So that's going to lead us into our forum questions this yes. week because our fir one of our first, first questions question. asks us what we think the, the four, four figures, figures are, are going to be, be that are going to be revealed at Toy Fair. So uh, do you have any guesses on that? Mine off the top of my head, um, Ram Man would be cool, but I don't think it's going to happen this Ram year. Ram Man scares me because of all the tooling they're going to need yep. for him. I don't think it's going to happen this year. I think we'll get She-Ra. She I think we'll get she Well, they um, told us, I think, already that she is definitely coming this year. So. They've said we're going to get a new Adventures character this year, so I, I would bet they'd show a new Adventures character. Optic. Optic, Optic. would be cool. Optic, Optic or Flog. Optic. Or Flog. Or Slushhead. Like, Slushhead would like be cool. I like Slushhead a lot, too. Um, yes, I like new Adventures. I do, too. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> you know, it's not great, but the character designs were great for the show. I liked show. it. And I liked the it. You know, for the by the way, this question was asked by Chris Vance. Yes. Just going to make sure I give him the shout-out for asking the question. Um, <laughs> what is that, two? Uh... Third, I'd like to see a Snake Man. Ooh, King Hiss? I, I don't know. Like... Not King Hiss. I think I'd like to see Cobra Khan. Cobra Khan. Personally? Um, God, I don't know it's, who it's, else. It's hard to think. Okay, Photog. It's... Photog. Uh, thank you. No dirt. Photog If will never we got happen. the Fearless Photog, I'd buy it. Yeah, I'd I would be too. all over that. Um, <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. I've been pushing for Mosquitoor really hard. But Mosquitoor, but that toy, would take a lot of Guru, cooling. Toy Guru just said in the last uh, Q&A we asked that... They're gonna do Mosquitoor, but he they can he confirmed that it wouldn't be for a while. Yeah. So he's not gonna be one of the four figures. Um, I would say that we've got guys like I think Mechanek has a good chance. Mechanek, Mechanek, and if we they've get already Mechanek, mentioned how they would do Mechanek, and so. if we get Mechanek, then I think Stinkor is an absolute because yeah. we'll have the parts from Merman and we'll have the the armor from Mechanek. So I think if they do Mechanek, we'll get Stinkor for sure. So I'm gonna say those two. Yeah, that's a good call. I think those are two really good ones that we'll probably get. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Jitsu. Jitsu or would be somebody. Cool. Fisto? Um, maybe Fisto too, but yep. that, like we've got the armor already with King Randor, and I'm just trying to think like, you know, they're reusing these parts and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I think Jitsu might be one that's coming. Uh, you're probably dead on with She Ra. Yeah. I guarantee we'll. I don't know Whether if she'll be Whether they show her at Toy Fair, she's definitely They'll coming definitely this year. show her. At San Diego I mean, Comic Con, if they don't show her before yeah, that Toy Fair, I guarantee that. Yeah, we have that. to get She-Ra this year, I guarantee. Or they might reveal some at C2E2 um, this year, too. 
I'm kind of hoping they do reveal a new Adventures character, so I'm going to go and put my money on Optic. I think Optic is going to be the first one they do, because I know the Four Horsemen have said that they would love to take a stab at doing Optic. Yeah, absolutely. He's like their favorite of the new Adventures characters, I yeah. think. And I know he's got a huge fan following with... Like, even fans of Masters that don't appreciate the new Adventures stuff would all buy Optic. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they've Just all cause said... Because he's a cool... I mean, how can you not like a character whose head is a giant eyeball? That's all I'm saying. Dirt, yes. Dirt. What about Orko is a San Diego exclusive? Orko is an exclusive? They, you know, they've dis they discussed that, especially at the fan panel last year. People I kept think... bringing up Orko, and they were like, we're going to do Orko. He won't be, uh, they pretty I, much guaranteed he wouldn't be a standalone I figure. I think he's going to be a pack-in, pack or he's going to be a two-pack. I can see Orko coming with... Prince Adam? I could well he 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 could be a pracken with like a character like Prince Adam which would be sweet or if they did like a two character pack maybe if they did like Orko and, and Cal? uh, Cowl from Princess of Power I would like that or some people even suggested Gwildor from the movie oh. I don't know about that one but be nice. I mean it's it's possible I like the movie yeah I like the movie I don't well, they, they can do movie figures they can do they the, can do the movie they figures, can do the movie figures, figures that were score. already released in the old so line. they did Gwildor they did Blade Gwildor and Blade did, and Sauron. Uh, Sauron they have the rights to Bl uh, Blade Sauron and Gwildor yes. but nobody else so we can get those yes um, but yeah I think that's that those are my my guesses at least Mechanek and Stinkor those are two probably so. and probably Shira and probably Optic I guess we'll find out in a we'll month. find out we'll yeah. find out soon. Okay, next question. Next question. This is a good one. Crash Murdoch asks, when did you realize that you were a collector rather than just a kid who plays with toys? Wow. You want to go first? I can go first. Go first. I can. I can pretty much pinpoint this one, I think. I can too, but I want to hear yours first. First of all, I'll, I'll say this. It probably started around the time I was buying the Toy Biz X-Men figures. Mm. And I'll say that only because when I was buying those toys, I remember my dad always making these comments to me. Why don't you actually play with those toys? All you do is ever line them up and stand them up, put all their accessories on them, and line them all up, and then you take them down and put them away again. So I wasn't even playing with those toys at that point. I was just, <laughs> I liked having all the figures and the accessories and everything. But I would definitely say that the moment I realized I was actually a collector was around 95, 96, when the Power of the Force figures of Star Wars came out. Because I went into the store. And I, I probably hadn't really been buying toys for a couple of years since those X-Men figures. Yep. And I was about 12 years old probably at this time, 12, 13. And I walked in and I found Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. And I went, Star Wars toys? Mm. Oh my God, I'm buying these. And I got them both home and I ripped them open and I thought they were awesome. And then, you know, by this point, Star Wars figures started just flooding the stores yep. everywhere. And then, this is when I really became a collector because I'd go in the store and I'd always look for the new Star Wars figures. But I would take them home and I would hang them on the wall. I would not open them. <laughs> I became a mint on card collector. So that moment right there in, in I would say, 96 is when I became a collector. Yep. And that's when my Star Wars collecting started. I still, to this day, am still buying Star Wars figures pretty much every time yep. I'm, I'm out doing my shopping. So. Oh, God. Mine, mine would start, and too bad, too bad Cash isn't here because he'd love this. Mine actually started when they started releasing the Power Ranger figures. The when the Zords. Stuff. The Zords is what started it all because I literally was, I was in high school when Power Rangers really started to get big when they started to do, uh, you know, the Ninja Zords and all that. When the Zords started to get really right, big right. and really cool. I was in high school. I was, uh, I was probably a sophomore. And I remember buying, uh, buying the Falcon Zord and buying a couple other random Zords. And then from that day on, every week, when I'd get a paycheck uh, from working at, I worked at Pizza Hut then, and I'd get a paycheck. I literally, on our lunch break from the time we got out of, uh, our, our vocational classes where I was studying TV and film and had to go back to school, we literally would run to Toys R Us every day, <laughs> literally, and see what they had on the shelves. And I swear to you, every week I came, I probably plopped down $200, $300 a week oh my on Power God, Ranger on stuff. Power I had a lot of Power Ranger stuff. That's awesome. And, of course, I sold it all. When, we, when Dan and I originally opened a toy store years ago, I sold it all. But I had a lot of Power Ranger yep. stuff, and that's I had I remember it, all of it. I had a, I had everything. I had all the Zords, but unlike Scotty Cash, all mine were still in the box. I had taken them up, put the stickers on, had messed with them, had displayed them in some fashion. Uh, but ultimately, they went back in the <laughs> box and in. they just stood on the shelves in the boxes. So awesome. that's ultimately, literally, when I became a collector. And that would have been when, when was Mighty Morphin big? That was probably like ninety two, ninety three. Uh, I graduated in ninety five. Would have been ninety three. Yeah, 93. 93 and then 94 so you is when the movie me. came out. 
So, I mean, yep. that's when it really 93. exploded. Awesome. Sweet. Yeah. Well, that was a fantastic That's probably yeah, that's one of the a best. Cool, that's, that's a great question. So. Yeah, hats off to Crash. That's a good, cool question. <laughs> if you guys ever want to ask us any questions you want to see answered on the show, or you got fan art you want to send us, Ooh. you can always hit us up on the forums at thatnewtoysmail.com. Or you can send us an email at tntsadmin at gmail.com. So right. send those our way. We love getting that stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. We'll always uh, make sure we give you guys a shout out right here on the show. So yeah. I think that's going to go ahead and wrap up this yeah. installment of uh, That New Toy Smell. Absolutely. So, anything else you got for today? No, I'm, I'm good. I'm looking forward to 2010. I'm oh, looking man, forward to, uh, to going oh, to Toy Fair this year as long as the uh, Toy, Fair, Toy yeah. Industry of America decides to approve our <laughs> press badges. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be there. Guys, uh, always... Remember, you can check out KillinEnterprises.com if you're interested in buying any of the awesome stuff you see around us. Toys, video games, so, PC games, DVDs, we carry it all right sword here Sword of the, the New store. World on PC, new. It's a good, it's good, 14 dollars It's a good game. Go buy it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think... Uh, yeah, it's a great game. Great game. Uh, we got more podcasts and all kinds of great stuff like that on pro wrestling and MMA, fantasy football, the works at VGLosers.com. And you can always check out new episodes of That New Toy Smell every Saturday. And new episodes of the It Figures podcast every Wednesday at thatnewtoysmell.com. As well as pretty much new content every day on that new, new content every Except day. Except for this week, we're, you know, it's New, Recovering. Year, it's new Year's week. You Recovering, know, but yeah, we're, we, we're yeah. getting back in the swing of things. And I'll tell you what, things are about to get real good. So make sure you all stay tuned to popculturenetwork.com. That's right. Which will be Woo, the, <laughs> which will be the new go-to place for yes. everything that Absolutely. we do. So until next week, guys, I'm Pixel Dan. I'm Duvall. Take I'm care, Dan. guys. Woo! Duck! Like, OMG!